Yeah. Okay. Choice differential functions, define probable numbers, blah, 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 blah. X coordinate of each relative mass is for X. Wait, is this like the graphy kind of stuff? Yeah, kind of. Now, guys, real quick. How do you find where there is a max or a min? How do you find where there's a relative extrema? Find the limit. Yep. Positive. So specifically when f prime is zero, and then when f prime of x changes, let's see, what are we looking for? A relative min? Yeah. Negative to positive. Yeah. Changes signs. So. First of all, where is f prime on here equal to zero? This is for f specifically. Okay, good. Negative one and one. Right? Yeah. Now this one goes negative to negative. Is that a min? No. This one goes negative to positive. Is that a min? Yes. Yes. So there is a relative min at x equals one. Now there are two justifies that you could use for this. Okay, you could write f prime changes positive to negative. That is justifying it with the first derivative test. I could justify it with the second derivative test. How do you justify it with the second derivative test? We hate second derivative tests, so we don't even bother. Ah, oh, come on. F double prime is bigger than zero, because see right here how it's three, which means it's concave up. Yep. So if the second derivative is concave up, then it's also a relative. So you can use either one of those two justifications. Wait. No, not necessarily. No. No, it doesn't say that. They're just two separate things. But because look, oh, uh, you're right. My bad. I, I thought that that was an F double prime. You're right. All right, fine. So, me wrong. I'll just enjoy it. Yeah. This is for me. My chat's a little bit. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> 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 okay. Hey. Alright, here we go. Uh, what was what this? 2014. Okay. Not scoring. Oh, you're scoring. Linux. Okay, perfect. Alright, guys, Bar B. <laughs> he's really nice. He's really funny, but he's also. You're going to have top three. Uh, okay, you guys ready? You can add him there and you can cross him. ready. Yeah, you can. Yeah, f prime changes from negative to positive is the answer justification. That was only worth a point, so that's like whatever. All right. Mark B, this is worth two points. It says, explain why there must be a value C somewhere in there where the second derivative equals zero. Can you guys think of a, of a um, theorem that says something about mean value? Mean value theorem, very good. Now, what does mean value theorem say? If it's differential. Slope equals derivative, right? Now, since it's second derivative, though, it has to be the slope of the first derivative. Make sense? Because it's second derivative. So, slope of the first derivative has to equal the second derivative. That's mean value theorem right there. But in order for the mean value theorem to work, two things have to happen. Okay? Do you remember what the two things are? It has to be blank and blank. Continuous, Continuous and differentiable. Very good. So we're going to say it like this. F is, sorry, F prime is differentiable. Twice differentiable. Yeah. Well, F is twice differentiable, which means F prime is differentiable. Yeah. I can't spell differentiable. I-A-B-L-E. After what you have. I-A-B-L-E? That's crazy. Yeah. Differentiable, not differentiable. Okay, f prime is differentiable, and you guys, anytime something's differentiable, it's also continuous because that's the definition. So we can say, and therefore, continuous. Perfect. And then we can say, by the mean value theorem, f prime of b minus f prime of a over b minus a has to equal f double prime of c. That is the mean value term, okay? So, you get it? Like, well, this is a two-point question, all right? Are they going to give us more room on the AP test? Yes. Yeah. This tiny yes. Little space? Okay, that's so good. This is I hope they are. Okay. So, I'm going to get f prime of 1 
minus f prime of zero or of negative one. Sorry. Do you mean value theorem or does MVT? You actually don't. Oh, MVT is fine. You don't even have to put that as long as you explain what you're using. But MVT is perfectly. Yeah, they'll, that's fine. They'll accept MVT. Correct. Okay. Now, what's f prime of one from my chart? F prime of one is zero. Zero. What's f prime of negative one? Zero. If you already know that f prime is differentiable and continuous, then you already know that f double prime has to have. Can you stop doing the most and just listen to the listening? No, 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 he's listening. No, no, I got you. So when I found that slope, I got zero, which means that somewhere there has to be f double prime of c equal to zero on that interval. It's just a mean value theorem, okay? There's really not that much you need to have. They're going to look for this statement. Boom. They're going to look for this. And that's it. Those are your two points. All right. So we need to have that equation to prove it. Yeah. I see just prove it as a value. Okay. Does that make sense? So that's mean value theorem. We're going to be studying, especially in a lot of these extra days, all the different I use the whole space. Well, I know, but the lot of we have is the end of the E. You can't use the whole space. But I also only made these papers single-sided specifically for this reason. Because now you can write right there. Isn't that nice thing? So was that? I killed twice the number of trees I was going to. That's what we like. So I'm not to be Down with the trees. I do not speak for the trees. Okay. I speak for capitalists. That should be your thing. That should be like... My name is Mitchell. I don't speak for the trees. I don't speak for the trees. I take out their knees for my class of BC. No, no, no. Just beat it. Hey, part C looks crazy easy to me. Does it look crazy easy to you? No. Yeah. Okay, what's the term of LN? 1 over A. Very good. So it's <laughs> 1 over f of x. Do you know that's the only derivative that I actually know? Like, memorize. F prime of x. So what's h prime of 3? 1 over f of 3 times f prime of 3. Right? So now i got to look and read my table. Oh, the reason these are called multiple representations is because, like, you think they're tables or graphs or whatever. So they represent it multiple ways. That's why they're called multiple representations. Okay, what's f of 3? What's f of 3 from my chart? 7. 7. What's f prime of 3 from my chart? 1 half. 1 half. Okay. Guys, this is a three-point question. You got two points for that. Two points for that. One point for your answer. Okay? All right. Now, part D. Uh, some of the questions that we're going to do out of this back is saying, my AB students, you haven't quite gotten to intervals yet. We're kind of doing it right now. But Still? this should make sense. Don't no. worry. You have no Imagine. room to talk to anybody about anything. So. Okay? So you just chill. Must be tough. I can't say anything. You know enough for this stuff. When you get a two, oh, yeah, I feel like I know just enough that I can say it must be tough. Oh my gosh. Ew. Hey, hold on. Ew. I think I'll do hold on. It's actually not as bad as you would think it is. Do you guys know what the value of this equation is? Yeah. 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 Do you guys recognize that f prime of g times g prime? Do you recognize that? No. It's chain That's a chain rule. That's right. That's the chain rule, and what is that the derivative of? So it's f of g. F of g of x. So what would the integral of that be? F of g of x. Evaluated from 3 negative. Do we have to actually write it? Can we just write f of g of 3 minus f of g of negative 2? So, okay. oh, yeah. it's, actually kind of nice so it's actually not that bad, and even in, in AB, even though I haven't totally gotten the integrals yet, you guys understand that the integral is the backwards derivative, so if you recognize that that's a derivative of the chain rule, you just go backwards. 
Now, the one thing I haven't taught you yet in AB, but we're going to talk about like on Tuesday or whatever, is uh, how you evaluate once you go backwards. And the way we evaluate you guys is we just go top minus bottom. Okay, so it's f of g of three minus. Hey, Stephen, do you know what we're doing? F of g of two. Then, he's been on his phone the whole time. I, I should give him no yeah. extra credit since he's not right. here. <laughs> he's technically been doing this. Okay. No. All right. So guys, in my uh, AB class, you guys, so we're going to learn that when you integrate with these little numbers right here, you always end up, when you integrate it, you do the top minus the bottom. Okay? Can we keep that since technically G of 3 is already defined so by that? So no, you can't keep it here because it, they want you to know what is G of 3, what is G of negative 2. So on my chart, what's G of 3? 1. What's G of negative 2? Negative one. What? So then it's going to be f of one, f of negative one off my chart. And then f of one. Two. Yeah, f of one is two, and f of negative one is eight. So it's two minus eight, so it's negative six. On that one, you got. Two points for fundamental theorem of calculus, <laughs> yeah. so basically that. <laughs> and a point for the answer. Okay? It's halfway done. I like that one. That <laughs> one was an action that bad. Easy, right? That was a good one. <laughs> That's a DC question. Right? That's a Navy question. No. That's okay. It's still good practice for you guys. All right. Good job. A lot of times, they sh like the A, B, and B standard keys will share so three or four of the same problems, and then you'll have a few different ones. So yeah, you'll still have some ones. Okay. Hold our equation. I love this question so much. These calculators do. Uh, they do polar graphs. I have to imagine in 2016. Yeah, uh, yeah, you have to put it in polar. That the people got to this question like, dude, I'm gonna nail this. This is so great. Right? Uh, okay, k of x is f of g of x. Write an equation for the tangent line at x equals 3. <laughs> Guys, equation tangent line. y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. It told me x is 3. Okay? How do I find the y value? Plug it in. Now, the tangent line for k, so I want to find k of 3. But from here, K of 3 is F of G of 3. Does that make sense? Okay, what's G of 3? What's G of 3? 6. And what's F of 6? 4. 4. And what did I just find, you guys? Y. The Y value, very good. So Y minus 4 equals something X minus 3. Okay, how do I find the something? Um, uh, derivative. derivative, very good. Now come back to K. Do a derivative. So the derivative of K is a chain rule. So how do we write that? F prime G of X times G prime X. Very good. And let's evaluate that at 3. Is it 10? F prime G of 3 times G prime 3. Probably. Okay. It's just chain rule. G of 3 is 6. G prime of 3 is 2. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's, that's, that's and F prime yeah, of 6 like, is Sorry, stop. sorry. I, 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 I looked at I looked at F prime. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I was like, okay. Okay. Easy. Everybody in here can do that, right? Yes. Yes, yes. yes, yes for sure. So that's good. So everybody on that one would get, I'm guessing it's just like one, maybe two points. So let's see. <laughs> that's a three point question. What? Oh, 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 oh. All right, easy. good job. Uh, two points for finding the 10, and then a point for the equation. You get two points for the 10? Yeah. I'll take it. Probably, I'm guessing, one point for the derivative and one point for the right? Yeah. Great. Okay. okay. Just so you know, Zach only got one point. No, 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 no. Buddy, oh, true. I got that. Wow. He got 40 because he looked at f of x. I didn't write it down. Man, that's rough for you. Must be tough. I mean, if you can't get here, then that's top two.
Okay, guys, now there's a new function called h, and h is g divided by f. So to find the derivative of this, what rule do I have to use? Quotient. let's go, let's go. I forgot it was quotient. No, we got this, we got this. All right. Uh, and then consult the table. Cotient roulette minus. You got this. Hello. Easy, easy does. Okay, D high. Is it easy? D high. G prime X yeah, yeah, minus high. Derivative low. F yeah. prime. Okay. Over. Yeah. He's gonna mean to me. Where? It's kind of deserved. Plug in one, but says why not? No, that's just my question. Negative six g prime one is eight minus g six. All of us are just reading it alone. Two f prime. But like he's smart, like he's an AB. Like he's a prime of one. Okay. F of x one is negative six, so this is just thirty six. Over thirty six. X forty eight minus. I don't think you have to do no Raymond. Don't simplify, bro. I simplify. <laughs> I think I'd get a hundred. I want to simplify that. Yeah, same. I don't really check out what that is. Negative three. I simplified right. Negative three. Alright, let's see. Negative three. But you really want to take that? Solano, did you get it? I think I did. Well, no. test yourself on more like I got halfway through the next time. And then what happened? I like cheating, but got distracted. Okay. No, I need to work on not doing it. You need to work on your job. From now on, no simplification. G prime of 1 is 8 times negative 6 minus 2 times. Three all over negative six squared, and we're leaving it like that, right? Technically, Zach, I did simplify negative six squared to thirty six. Oh my God, Dallin, get out! I know, get out! I have to drop out now. I simplified parts of it. Whoa, 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 whoa! Zach, we're going to do Mitchell. Negative fifty four over thirty six, which can be reduced to negative three halves. Yep. Yeah, Let's go! Are we gonna do that? No! But I got it right, so I'm okay. okay. Hey, I can Let's go. Cool. Right. I just left it at my F double prime, which is just F prime of 2x times 2. That's the better way to do it. Low di, high di low, all over low squared. Said the like, appellation of what we in the video. <laughs> low di low. Alright, you have. Cool. Oh, um, part B was worth three points. Oh, nice. Cool. One, no, uh, hold on, two points for that and a point for that. Okay, part C. It's right there. The integral from one to three of F double prime of two X dx. Which this one's actually okay. the easiest one. It's not too bad, you guys. Again, my AD class, we're going to learn this this upcoming week, but just stay with me here. I think I got it. The second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative, so if I go backwards, because that part makes sense. Here's the part that's tricky. It's the chain rule. When I take a derivative of f of 2x, I have to go f of 2x times 2. When I take an integral, I put a 1 half in front of it. That's basically it. Okay, so as an example, again, this is for my, it's for my AD kids, we're going to get this this week. The derivative to e to the 3x is e to the 3x times 3. The integral of e to the 3x is e to the 3x divided by 3. That's basically oh, it. Yes. Okay. Nah, Annabelle, that's a piece of cake stuff, right? Oh, oh, my oh, my bad. Okay, so it's one oh, like half, like right? right? And I'm evaluating this from 3 to 1. Yeah, I wasn't done. Did I get it right then? Well, let's see. So it's 1 half, and then it's f prime of 6 minus f prime of 2. Oh, bro, you're doing it differently. 
Can you leave it like that? No, because you have to figure out what the crap is. you got to figure out f prime of 6 and f prime of 2, 5 and negative 2. So it's 1 half 5 minus negative 2. Can I leave it like that? Yes. Yes. Is it All right. 5 over exactly. 2 minus 1? He's going to come out of the test with like an ulcer because he didn't sleep on anything. <laughs> I am. Oh, that is so bad. Ken? I did it. Yeah? That was an easy one, right? So. Yeah. I am digging Please. these multiple representation give us, questions. Give us that one. Let's go. Minutes. Now, this I'm one is super fun. 2017, they decided to go crazy. Right? 2017, they were like, we're going to go nuts. We're going to give you a table and a graph. Whoa! Oh, it is. Dang. They were like, we're just going I to thought it was a go kart. Right There's two motorcycles Whoa. strapped Wait, together. I think you're showing me the wrong video. Everybody, every time. Three, three, three. Wait, they gave us. Oh my gosh. Table and graph. Yeah. Yeah. Two motorcycles. That's the most redneck yeah, thing I've seen in my life. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing! It's like a chariot race. Oh yes, God. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, that's great. We gotta do that, girl. Oh, that's the. We gotta get like two of those like dinky mopeds and like them up. <laughs> two Vespas. Bro, imagine you pull up to school in a box on some wheels and two Vespas strapped to the front. <laughs> you get like you put the box on like a moving dolly. Hey, do you want to hop on my Vespas? Yes, let's go. A table. Now, this is like table. It's a graph. It's H for G of X, right? Oh, wait, why do we have H? The graph is H. The equation is X. There's three different things we're looking at here. So they're seeing if you can do calculus on a table, on an equation, and on a graph. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. F is defined by that, which actually does tell me it's continuous differential. Oh, yeah, you added what? So it wants an A. G wants is continuous a differentiable, a and we can see that H is continuous at least. Okay? But not differentiable. But not differentiable. Oh, this is good okay, part A. Find the slope of the tangent line to the graph of S at pi. One plus one is two. What is slope of tangent line? What is just the slope? Derivative. Yeah. Don't write the whole equation, just write the derivative. So this is just asking for the derivative of x at pi. So can we take the derivative of that? Yeah. Derivative of cosine is negative sine 2x times 2. Derivative of e to the sine is e to the sine times cosine. Can you just put in pi for the x's and call it a day? Yes, I believe you can. Okay, sweet, because I do not want to do that. We're going to simplify anyway because you guys suck at this and we need to practice. Oh, I don't really want to do that. Oh, wait. But, do you notice, do you notice that we've done so many sine and cosine, but all it's ever asked us is for 0, pi, pi over 2, 2 by Well, pi. we also needed the square root 2 over 2. Yeah, we did need that. But that's kind of more chill. So it's not too tricky unless you do this stuff. Okay, sine of 2 pi, that goes all the way around, that's 0. Sine of 1 pi, that's also 0. And the cosine of pi is negative 1. So this is all negative What do you mean by 0 times 2, e to the 0 is 1 times negative 1. I got negative 1. Yeah, that's right. That would explain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had negative. Oh, but then we also have to plug in and tie into the original. Uh, this is what test seventeen. Pros and cons. Okay. Okay. Scoring. Okay. Okay. Wait, pi over pi. No, we don't need to make an equation. It just wanted the slope of the tangent line. That's it. I can never tell what it wants. Oh, the slope. That's all it wanted. Okay. The slope, not the so the slope. So two points for getting negative one. Okay. Easy doubt. That. Oh, okay. Easy doubt. Okay, let K be defined by that. Find K prime of 5. So, again, it's a chain rule. If they start looking familiar, it's because, yeah, we're taking a single topic okay, we still have to do and finding every question that's ever been asked on that topic. H prime right? f of x times f prime of yep, x. Yep, chain rule. Let's go. Yes. And then f we'll do of pi. H prime of okay. x. It looks like Ellen. Where? Sine pi is oh, zero, zero, zero right is one. 
Cosine of 2 pi is also 1, so that'd be 2. So, k prime, prime of two what are we trying to find pi? Is negative 1 third. Uh, f one pi. Okay, f of pi and f prime of pi. f prime of pi. Oh, Wait, didn't we find f prime of yeah, pi in part a? Yeah, so it's minus 1, so it'd be negative 4 third. f prime of pi is negative 4 third. So you have the pi is two. one plus, plus one. E to the zero. One plus one is two. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a, I love it when we get I found the entire one. slope. Oh. I, I found the entire slope oh. tangent. Oh, that's funny. Okay, so yeah, five. f of pi was two, f prime of pi is negative one. Now I need to do, I still need to do h prime of two. One third. Negative two one third, thirds? right? So it's one third is the answer? H prime of two. Yeah, remember that means slope, and so we just count it down one over three, right? So down one over three. So that's negative one third times a one. My handwriting was so bad I messed it up. Dang it. Are you guys feeling like kind of confident once you see these questions? They're like not yeah. bad. Yeah. I saw the negative one third and the negative one, and I thought it said negative one third. Yeah, but I mean, come on. Like that's not, that's a particle question, we'll do that when we're doing physics, that's a little insane, but whatever. Can we do a relative rates? He's a great mom. We're going to do that on, I forget what day. I have to do integrals first in my AP class for you, like, those all have integral questions. Relative okay. rates? Yeah. What? Wait a minute. Um, bro, those aren't my relative rates. Go back, go with the lines. I will, hold on. My relative rates only use what derivatives. I added that for you, don't worry. No, it's this. Look, this is a very, very classic. This is the classic. They actually call this the banana problem. When you're in AP Comics, it's like, okay, everyone remembers the banana problem. What? So, this is the banana problem. I'm literally going bananas. No, 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 I'm just showing him something real quick. So, everyone's like, okay, so you know the banana problem. So, customers remove bananas at a rate of that. That and is then disgusting. after the store is open for three hours, the employees add them back at a rate of that. How many pounds are removed in the first two hours? What's that private seven? Where'd my relative rates go? What? Where'd when? my happy, wonderful triangle ship no. pulling into a dock go? Multiple choice questions. Oh. When is the number of pounds increased, or is the number of pounds increasing or decreasing? And then a lot of times they'll ask you for I say like, it's increasing. When are there the most bananas on the table? When is it are there the least bananas on the it's table? It's safe, it's increasing. I think no. it's increasing. No, it's decreasing. It'll take me forever. Okay, anyway. It's decreasing until they well, start adding. I bet it's yeah, but decreasing it's... because they say when, is, when are the most bananas Wait. on the table. But it starts increasing after three hours we know the workers are putting yeah, in. Yeah, but do it. Okay. Yes, yes. Or C, new equation M. New equation M. Huh? Yeah. G of negative 2x times h of x. Hey guys, what rules are we doing to Product take the derivative? And chain. Product and chain. Can you do it? I did it already. Oh, Let's freaking go. You can do it. I mean, I haven't like solved it yet. But, you know, I, I yeah, yeah. Your product and chain. Yeah. Wait, we only have one more in this sucker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, all these packages are ten points. No, all these packages are your attendance meeting. So that's like ten points, twenty points, plus the fifteen. So I get thirty-five extra credit points. <laughs> Can, can someone who doesn't need the points donate their points to me? No. I need them so badly. <laughs> I'm passing, but if I don't get an A, I'm gonna die. So. I'm pat. I'm not passing. So if I don't pass, I'm gonna die. No, I want you guys to keep these. Who else is going in a room for Bantor? Because we got Yumi and you said Noah. Noah now, was not derivative going. Derivative of the first is a chain rule, right? So we need to get some other people. Well, derivative first times the second plus Sean. first <laughs> derivative second. So the most difficult part, to, or what they're really checking, is if you remember that negative two right there. What's Dante doing? Oh, we should get Okay, now, Delano. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. We're plugging in what number for this? Mm. Two? Each of this right here. This can't be negative. So I need to find g prime of negative 4, I multiply negative 2, and then h of 2, and then I have to do g of negative 4 and h prime of 2. So, g was on the table, right, and h was on the graph? Yeah, but it doesn't really give you like a good song. g of 4 and g prime of 4. Guess what you 
Oh, negative four. G of negative four and G prime of negative four are right there, so it's five and negative one. Table stuff is small and five. Something. Negative one. Something. Hey, not H of two and H prime of two. G two is negative one. You lie. There's a relative rate on the next one. Maybe. H of two. I hate that. Oh, we can find out exactly though, because it has a slope of negative one third. Oh, and it starts at zero. So it goes down a third over one, down a third over one. So it is negative two thirds. Yeah, yeah. I still hate that. Come on, Mitchell. I'm trying to. So it was negative two thirds, and the slope is negative one third. Mitchell, you switched the five and the negative one. Why is it negative? Utter rats, bro. Why is it negative two thirds? Mitchell. Sorry. Yeah, there is a square drop. No, it's getting blocked because of the crap. I <laughs> Mitchell swore. <laughs> I didn't know you guys got negative three. I was like, oh shoot. I was like, I got it. They had three. Yeah, that was so cool. I just looked at it like that. Yeah, we didn't simplify. Is that okay? Hey guys, uh, yeah, that was a three point question. Two points for getting M prime, one point for getting M prime of two. Good job. Good job. I still want to go before you can leave it. Like, that's the final This one you could have stopped right there. Okay, yeah. Oh, wait, right. you know what I've noticed? Wait, it's always going to be the next one. Okay, guys, this is real quick. Is there a number on the closed interval where the derivative equals negative 4? Hey, what does that sound like? That sounds like intermediate value there. No, it sounds like me switching one. We're like, if G, what would G problem be? Oh, wait, no, no, no. I always got. IBD and MBD confused. Intermediate value theory is when you're looking at F, and it's between two points. Mean is F prime. Yeah, okay? So the way you can tell mean value theorem is derivative equals slope. You're specifically looking at derivatives. So guys, for part D, okay? For part D, I am doing a mean value theorem on the interval negative 5 to negative 3. And I'm supposed to show that that way the derivative would be negative 4. So if it's g prime, then i got to use g. I go g of negative 3 minus g of negative 5 over negative 3 minus negative 5. Now, before you ever use the mean value theorem, I need you guys to write something. Before you ever use it, what do you have to say? It's continuous and differentiable. Now, does it tell me that in the problem? Yes. Why do I even have the G is differential. So before I'm allowed to use mean value theorem, you actually will lose a point if you don't do this. You have to say G is differentiable. No, it's not. It literally says. I override one. And therefore, sure you're not saying that. Wait, can I go be an NP test grader? Like how, how I'm gonna apply to be one next summer. Wait, what if you I got to be one? Because then I could like what? give myself. Maybe grader. You have to have taught it for like a few years before you can apply to be a great. So what if I lie and say I did? Um, I think you'll be able to tell because you're not less than an adult. Oh, really? Well, maybe I'm just a really successful adult. Oh, bad! G of negative 3, G of negative 5. It's 2 and 10. So here we go. I did spell any of that. 2 minus 10 over negative 3 plus 5. I'm applying. Now, this one I feel like you do have to simplify because it says, does it ever equal 4? So it's negative 8 over 2, which is negative 4. Oh, so yes. F, no, 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 it's not right. F, G. So G prime of C equals negative 4 somewhere in the interval from negative, three, negative 5 to negative 3. By MBT is probably how I would say it. Yeah, there, so this one said, therefore, by the mean value theorem, just, there's at least one value C such that G prime of C. Question, question. I'm Can we just have all of this mean value theorem work, work and circle the answer, answer yes? It says we have to write that sentence? You have to write that sentence. Right. Right. If I have all that, if I have all They the don't care. Really Literally on the scoring guide, it says you get a point for justification using the mean value theorem. 
Now, you don't have to say me right there, but you have to use the me right there because they're looking for those words. When you write, like, on the interval, negative 5 to negative 3, do you have to write the word interval, or can you write No, you can just write negative it. 5 to Yeah, for sure. Okay? Woo, we're just cruising, baby. Let's look at this last question. <laughs> And we can we can abbreviate that to MVC. Bro, I also yes, yes. definitely. MVC is a good. Yeah, we might. Yo, maybe. Let's do this quick, Don't guys. There's a couple of AB things that we haven't done yet, but just hang with us, okay? If I AB friend. That's a judgment call. Okay. We can't say anything until you. I don't know. This like, is a classic what? AP problem. Really okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. okay, Dom, you ready? I made a dragonfly. But Dallin, the ice sculpture is melting in such a way that the cone maintains a conical shape as it decreases in size. The sculpture was a cone? <laughs> really? <laughs> That's called an icicle. <laughs> That's an icicle. That's not a nice sculpture. No, 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 no. Is it upside down? Icicle. Stalagmite. It's a cone. <laughs> it's, a it's upside it's down. down. Right. No, it's, it's an flippy. icicle. Flippy. <laughs> you have to flip it. But it says it's an ice art sculpture. It's an Why ice sculpture, so it has to yeah, yeah. sit. You like... didn't even flip. Come on. <laughs> Dog, that comes it's on the bottom of my car after it rains. No. Yes. 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 No. <laughs> Very important. I Bro, it looks kind of like the, the wizard oh, hat from uh, <laughs> Harry Potter. It probably had, like, yeah, like a little, like, thing on it. A little face? A little face. The point being, it should be Anyways, now, the table gives values of R prime. Rate, this is actually more of a rate question, let's see. The rate of change of the radius from 0 to 12. Some dude was just showing. Okay, guys, listen. Into the file. We had a question like this on, was it maybe one of the multiple choice packets? I can't remember. I have to pick up. If it asks you to approximate this, you're going to approximate with a slope. Okay? Now, Landon, when did you get here? Just now. Oh. No, he's oh. always overly late. You've been here all the time. I know, just make sure you get some points for this. All right. <laughs> Approximate our double prime of 8.5. Guys, where does 8.5 fall in this table? In between 7 and 10. Yeah, it's like right in here. So we're just going to find a slope, wow. and the slope of our prime gives me our double prime. Make sense? The slope of our prime gives me our double prime. So I go y2 minus y1 over, oh, it actually told me 7 to 10. It doesn't even usually tell you that, but okay. x2 minus x1. See, boom, this, boom. Is, this is a sculpture. This, this is art. <laughs> so it's what? That's 0. 0.6 over 3? Could we, we just leave it then? like this? Ah, uh, for sure. Oh, no simplification. Like that, sure. No simplification. Oh, yeah. 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 Good job, yeah. Zach. However, what's your name it, Zachary? Yeah. 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 However, Zachary, you're going to lose points yeah. if you yeah. don't put your units. Oh, I'm going to definitely remember those. Really? <laughs> I <laughs> says I you don't take know. units of measure by age. Of course like I'll remember. Why oh, does it sound like that? Yeah, me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, top right drawer on my desk. I'm going to be Okay, so. I think this is the new. One point for the work, one point for the oh, units. Now, you guys, real quick. Eugene Dillion. Eugene Dillion. Wow. Yeah. What? Okay, yeah, you done. Our prime is centimeters per day. Centimeters per day CM. So the way you can do this is it's centimeters per day per day. You can put per day squared or you can put centimeters per day per day. Every time you take a derivative, it adds another unit of time on the bottom. Okay? Yeah, I know. Now, so if we did a if we did a third derivative, it would be right. two. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Now, okay. Hey, by the way, this was a BC question, A, B, and C question. Yes. Okay. This isn't that hard. So hard. Don't jinx it, bro. <laughs> now, guys, this is really, really important. Listen. When I see this, usually I'm like, oh yeah, mean value theorem. 
Right? Yeah. Where's the cat? You guys are so dumb. Why is this fun for you? Because I made a dragonfly with when a pencil you, on the clip. Okay. And when you put it in front, you can see it on the thing. Oh my gosh, it's like it's a camera or something. <laughs> okay, guys. Hey, if I had a graph of R, or I had a table of R, or something. <laughs> Alright. Oh! I will kick you out. Alright, is everybody happy now? Wait, hold on. We can see Dr. Seuss, now. okay? Oh Alright. It won't focus. The button that says just be wow. kind, you know? Okay, I'm gonna give Dang. you two calculus. Alright. When the derivative equals negative six, if I had some information on R of T, it would be mean value term. I don't. I have information on intermediate value R prime. This is intermediate value. Wow, well, Let's go. That's okay? Like now, yeah. we can knock it off. Uh, so, it's, it's a red black hat. Is there a time where the derivative has to equal negative 6? Can you guys look at these numbers right here? Yes. Yeah, uh, 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 do you think there's yeah. someone that has somewhere it has to equal somewhere negative 6? Yeah. Yeah. Where? Between there and there. Between there and there. So all we have to talk about is how to write this up. Okay? Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Yes, so I am so ready. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Do you guys see somewhere where it says it's differentiable? Delano. Where? Delano. Do you got the family tree? Okay, so family tree. since R is twice differentiable. The relatives near me thing on the family tree? We live in Utah and I'm black. There are no relatives anywhere. We'll talk about that outside. We're almost done. All right. Yeah, we can do it later. I got days of grading ahead of me. You can just assume I did it all right. Uh, no. Me too. Since R know. is twice differentiable, R prime is continuous. But you've already agreed upon the grade that I'm going to get. No. That's what you said. Therefore... Oh, yeah, all those missing assignments yesterday? A lot, yeah. Okay, therefore, by the intermediate value theorem, which you don't actually have to say, but by the intermediate value, value theorem, Not there is a time, it's all by T, it's not where... R prime of t equals negative 6 on the interval. Where is it going to happen, you guys? There's a shot that we are. On the interval, to what to what? Zero to yeah. yeah. So I'm saying that somewhere between 0 and 3, it's going to equal negative 6. That's how you would write that up. This one is all just like writing stuff, which is a little tricky. Bar B is all writing. You're me. You're me closer than Shut it. Okay. Hey guys, we love part C. Don, we love part C. We love part C. We love Oh, right, Riemann sums? Those right, Riemanns are so easy. Okay, AB, we haven't done this yet, so you're getting a little preview of one of our lessons for next week. A Riemann sum is a way that we approximate an area. Instead of going, oh, it's under the curve and I shade the area under the curve, right? Like that? Well, if I don't know what the curve is, what I do is I use a bunch of rectangles to kind of estimate what it is. This is called a Riemann sum. In AD, we're doing this like next week or the next week. Riemann is kind of, he's kind of big right okay. So look guys, you go like this. My first rectangle, my first rectangle has a base of three. And the height, we pick the one on the right. Why are we picking the one on the right? Because it's a right Riemann sum. If it was a left Riemann sum, we'd pick the other one. So my first rectangle has a base of 3 and a height of negative 5.0. No, I'm not even Make sense? Yes, ma'am. You don't have to tell it. My second rectangle has a base of 4 and a height of negative 4.4. My third rectangle has a base of 3 and a height of negative 3.8. And the next one has a base of 2. And my fourth rectangle has a base of 2 and a height of negative 3.5. And I should write the approximately. Right here. I can see the bottom, but where are we top? Okay, because so what this really is, you guys, these are like points like this on a graph, and the base of the rectangle goes from 0 to 3, and then the height is right there. 
And then the base goes zero to four, and the height is right there. And the base height. You don't need to write anything else, right? Yeah, and shockingly, it doesn't even say units, does it? No. Now, if it did, though, let's talk about it. It would be days, right? But, it would be days because I'm but, integrating and I'm going uh -huh. backwards. And because it's only. No, 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 no. It wouldn't be days. Sorry. No, 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 no. no. It wouldn't be days. I'm going backwards from centimeters per day. It would be so centimeters. 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 Yeah. Mm. It would be centimeters. So let me see. Centimeters. Yeah, they added it up. You don't have to. It's negative 51. If it asks for an, expl an explanation. Mitchell? Mitchell? I didn't simplify it. Good job. I'm so proud of I'm you. I'm not going to simplify that either. If it asked me for uh, oh, units, it would be centimeters. If it asked me for an exclamation, uh, an explanation, the radius. You need to start writing my name on your paper. <laughs> yes, over the 12 hours, the radius like decreased by uh, whatever that is centimeters. Okay, that's what it's saying. That's how much the radius changed. All right, last question, Dallin. Here's your related rate question. I know, and you said they didn't exist. No, they do. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cry now. You said there weren't any. The height decreases at a rate of. Hey, guys, what do we call that? The height decreases at a rate of? The derivative the is like negative, negative two. Is negative two. You can put units. You don't have to on their work. At time equals three. The radius is 100. R is 100. The height is 50. Height is 50. Find the rate of change of the volume. What am I looking for? Find dvdt with respect to time in cubic centimeters per day at time day three. Oh, that was nice of them. What? Look what they gave me. Oh, yay. yay. One third pi r squared h. Wait. Now. <laughs> that's, wait, that's v? Wait. I well, because it's dvdt, it's just basically right now this t is just saying it's all just happening at the same time. Wait, I thought it was four thirds. Volume is just, no, that's a sphere. Volume is oh. a sphere, is four thirds pi r cubed. Ah, never mind. Okay. Never mind. Too many. <laughs> <laughs> now, real quick, guys. Well, I, it, since it gives it to us, I wouldn't have done it. But Do you see how I have two variables in here? Can't trust your answers now. When you have yeah, two I variables, know. now this is specific to a cone question. Specifically to a cone question. There's too many variables because of okay. B and R and an H. So what you have to do this is on cone questions. Because it didn't give me a, like, I'm looking for a, yeah, you have to, like, write a proportion. You don't have to. You do. You can just figure it out. If oh, no, that's you have to write it, R and so that's H, okay? Now, when it's fully, like, at, or at this point or whatever, R over H equals 100 over 50. Can you just write H so, R over 2, though? Yes, I'm getting there. Or R equals 2H. Or R equals 2H. Yeah, but then you. But hang on a second. Are we going to want to work in terms of R or are we going to want to work in terms of H? H, I H. Terms of H because it gave me a DH. Fine. Fine. <laughs> so can we do H as one half R? I want to work in terms Fine. of R though. No, Zach, you actually could if you wanted to. And you know how you do that? You say that 2 dh dt equals dr dt, so the rate is actually just double of it, but whatever. But Zach was going to forget well, to do that. that. He was going to forget to do that. I H is 1 half r. Guys, can you help me write this volume equation in terms of h? So instead of r, what do we put? Oh, no, wait. Squared. Wait. I want it in terms of h. Oh, I do want to put r. Because oh. I want oh. in terms of H, so R needs to be 2H. Everybody apologizes. I'm sorry. I still hate you. I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't say anything, but... R is 2H, and I want it in terms of H, so that's good. So this is one-third. Okay, guys, 2H squared is 4, so I'm going to put that to be a 4. H3. So the volume is 4 thirds by H3. Okay? Because I put in a 2H for the R, and then I just squared that, because that's 4H squared, 1 third times 4, pi, H to the third. I understand, but my brain hurts so bad. I know, but these are fun. Okay, now, ready? 
D, V, V, T. Now that we're in one variable, I don't have to do a product rule. So Zachary, if you did it the other way in two variables, it's fine. You just have to do a product rule. And it works. And I do that sometimes. And I just figure out what D, H, D, T is and what D, R, D is. So you can totally do that. OK, ready? What's the derivative of this? Uh, four pi three comes down in front. This would be four. Yeah, four pi four h squared. Four pi h squared d h d t. Okay, what's h? Three thousand. Fifty. How about fifty? That's worth two. <laughs> well, what's d h d t? Two negative. Probably negative that. two. Oh, it's negative two. What are the units for volume? If height is centimeters per day, what's the units for volume? Right, well. Is your mark is Eugene. Volume? Cute. Cute. Am I going to multiply that out? Heck no. no. But what if it said write a sentence? Does it say write a sentence? No. Oh, yeah. You got that earlier. Find the rate of change in the volume with respect to time. Okay. It did not say write a sentence, but if it did, this is my uh, ice sculpture. What would the sentence say? This is mine. The ice sculpture is decreasing at a rate of. If I go and I grab a snow plow and I push all the snow into a pile, it's not a sculpture. It's just a pile of snow that turned into ice. Excuse me. Dally. Art is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, don't I'm know. the beholder, and that's not art. <laughs> but if I'm beholding it, it is art. Well, too hey, bad. Guys, my opinion hey, if you don't close your mouth, you're going to behold this ass beating. Oh, my God. Are you threatening a teacher? Or are you threatening me? Yeah. Yo, two 